What's up guys? Taking the time to answer a question from Kyle Brown. Kyle asks, what program is best specifically for muscle growth? Kyle, you have come to the right place, my friend, because I'm going to answer you. So what's the best way to actually grow a muscle? The age old question amongst the bros out there. From my early days in the late 80s and early 90s, all we had was muscle magazines, Flex Magazine and Muscle and Fitness and Muscle Mag International and Muscle Media 2000 and Iron Man and the list goes on and on. And I read every single one of those magazines. I even read the fringe fitness magazines that weren't even you know, less um, hardcore than a muscle and fitness, which was very mainstream. The common theme amongst all of those magazines, and the only information we had at the time, were what we now call the bro split. The bro split is basically training one muscle group per day per week. I train my triceps and biceps on Monday. I train my shoulders and, and chest on Tuesdays. I train my you know, lats and biceps on, on Wednesday or Thursday. I train my quads and hamstrings on Friday, and I do ancillary work, calves and neck and forearms on Saturday. That's the basic bro split. There's different variations of that type of bro split where sometimes it's only triceps in the morning and only biceps at night and it's only shoulders in the morning and only pecs at night. And that's a more advanced bro split. Now mind you, and please know, and we have to learn the hard way, that those splits are really most effective for drug enhanced athletes. Not supplement enhanced athletes, but drug enhanced athletes, performance enhancing drugs. Those do miraculous things to the human body and almost anything works. There's been studies where uh, individuals were put on testosterone and they added lean muscle tissue without exercising at all. I forget what the exact fact was and I'll, I'll show it up in here as, as we're talking. Um, but that was just the ingestion of, of these pharmaceuticals or anabolic agents worked without even exercising. So of course any program will work. That's not what we're going to talk about. That's not what I want to detail to you. What I want to talk about is what program works for most of the people, the vast majority of the population, the vast majority of the time, and has the vast majority of the results that we're looking for. So we're going to focus on what works for the natural athlete, the natural trainee, the novice, the beginner, and the intermediate trainee. Once you get to the advanced level, which very few are, there becomes different types of periodization that can be brought in, different techniques to really take an advance. I mean, you're advanced, you're already in the top, you know, 10 percentile or less single digit percentile of the rest of the population. A few, you know, tricks need to be played to keep enhancing those goals. But for the rest of us, right, the rest of us, normal people, normal humans that are not drug enhanced and they're already not at the advanced level, the most efficient program is a full body, multi-joint compound lift system. What does that mean? That means we train our entire body every other day, three days a week is fine, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You train your entire body through the basic movements that the human body was designed to perform. What are these movements? The human body squats, right? That's one basic movement. Now we squat. When we're squatting, we're, we're essentially bending at the knee. Also, there's some sort of flexion and extension in the hips. But really, it's the, the breaking of the knee. 5%, 5% of motion is motion. You can feel those muscles engage. That's a form of a squat. Whether it be lunges or traditional goblets and front squats and back squats and high bar and low bar, that's whatever. That's fine. That just is exercise selection. The human body squats. What else do we do? The human body pushes. I push, I push, I push, right? I push away. And typically it's upper body push. So we squat, we upper body push vertically and horizontally. We also upper body pull vertically and horizontally. Now horizontally can be here. I can be bent over pulling this way. I can be pulling on cables, what have you. Again, I'm pulling. So I'm either squatting, I'm pushing, I'm pulling, and I'm hinging. So the hinge is here at the hips. Knees are fixed, you know, whether it's slightly bent or we don't suggest non-bent knees, stiff like a deadlift, but hinging happens motion at the hips, also through our spine, but we're hinging, bending at the hips essentially. Um, and then the last thing that we do is we rotate, we rotate, or really our core is designed primarily to resist rotation, resist. If I get pushed, 
my core engages to resist so we're resisting force essentially but also we're working through the full range of motion and that can be done in many many different ways so again let's let's rehash this we squat we push we pull we hinge we rotate that's five basic things those are five core lifts so now we, that's the full body we train the full body using multi-joint compound movements what is that multi-joint is multiple joints are being used at the same time bringing in a larger variety of muscle groups you're getting more bang for your buck instead of doing tricep press downs really strict with a cable i'm going to instead go to a dip bar and i'm going to zip my way through working the pecs working the deltoid working the serratus working the tricep working the trap working so many more muscle groups than just that fixed squeeze the bodybuilder style and that's fine for the bodybuilders that are already bodybuilders and have already built 90 percent of their physique through doing these concepts that i'm sharing to you guys right now multi-joint compound movements not leg extensions squatting goblet squatting med ball walking lunges check my other videos you'll see what we're talking about we want to perform one basic exercise through these basic human movements so we're gonna goblet squat we're going to overhead dumbbell military from the floor we're going to bent over pendle row with a wide grip we're going to rdl Ro romanian deadlift or kettlebell single leg rdls the list goes on and on rotation we're going to um gable grip med ball gable grip russian twists awesome um and that's there we go right that was the five as i'm talking i'm counting not really um but you can see and now that list goes so wide so wide i can dumbbell overhead press i can barbell overhead press i can kettlebell clean and overhead press i can bamboo bar with uh, rubber bands with elastic bands hanging from the sides and plates hanging from the side I can press right there's so many different ways to do it I can underhand chin I can weighted hand isometric uh, or underhand weighted vest isometric chin up I can uh, I can TRX row I can band snap I can bodybuilder low cable row and there's so many things that you can do but pick one exercise we want to train weight wise right so we know the frequency Monday Wednesday Friday we know the exercise we know the goal of the training day we're not exercising we're training the goal of the day is to work as many muscle groups as possible in as as much of a biomechanically efficient pattern as possible to maximally stimulate the central nervous system without burning it out that's why we're not doing you know five exercises and 20 total sets for biceps we're hitting it and we're getting the hell out of there multi-joint compound movements done every other day full body and training percentage we want to train right around that 80 percent range 80 percent of your one rep gym max not your perceived one rep ammonia caps powerlifting competition unless you're them unless you're already in that last 10 percent and most people are not i'm not there right now myself i've been there from time to time i'm not there right now this is what i need to be doing and we need to be doing this is where the gains come um, so we're going through multi-joint compound movements every other day Monday Wednesday Friday wide selection of biomechanically correct movements that are again working as many muscle groups as possible um, and we're training approximately 80% of our one rep gym max now what does that 80% reflect at 80% of your one rep max with perfect form and that's what our one rep max is right that's in important to understand here when we're programming I'd rather you be at 73% of your true one rep max instead of starting at the 80 because that gives you scalability that gives you the, the ability to move forward George Lehman had made this point in one of his older YouTube videos a few years back and I don't think the community really really, really grabbed on to that the scalability is I'm starting here even if it's a little lighter I'm gonna be perfect with it and I'm gonna be developing these these inroads to the to the central nervous system to the muscular system in enhancing the energy systems just getting those clean quality reps so when I do get to the 80% I can still keep going I have that scalability and I've made great progress from 73 to 80% so we're gonna say about 80% of your one rep gym max very important 
So at 80%, most, most athletes will fall somewhere between three to eight repetitions at 80%. If it's only three repetitions, you're likely very novice and you haven't, your central nervous system doesn't understand how to perform it, so you're, you're failing at certain areas. If it's at 8%, you've already gone through a training phase where you're now un, either underestimating your true one rep max or it's time for you to jump because you've improved your one rep max during that last training cycle. That happens. A lot of times people will choose their weight week one, come week three or week four with proper programming, there are, they've already added three to 7% to their one rep max. That might not matter to some, but when you're talking about, you know, 500, 700, you know, 800 pounds sometimes on a squat or on a deadlift, well, those percentage add up to quite a bit. So we're training now multi-joint compound movements every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we're training approximately 80% of our one rep max. Now during that time, let me fix this screen here. During that time, you want to be focused on maybe four sets or so of approximately six repetitions. Six repetitions for muscle growth. We're talking muscle growth. Strength gain and muscle growth should be hand in hand. You cannot separate the two unless you're maybe on performance enhancing drugs, but strength training and muscle training, muscle growth, they're combined. They have to be combined, especially when you want to keep adding the slabs of muscle year after year after year so you can accumulate that muscle instead of kind of false bloated muscle and then back to normal and false bloated muscle and then back to normal most of you are on those programs you, you fall into that we want to get rid of that with this honest actionable information that's that's what this is about right now so multi-joint compound movements every other day um, approximately 80 percent of our one rep max for about six repetitions. If you can get four sets of six repetitions, it's time to increase the weight a few percentage. Maybe it's just a set of collars. Maybe it's a one kilo plate on each side. Maybe it's five pounds on each side. Whatever the lift is, it's up to you. But we should always, 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 always be trying to add weight, add reps, or decrease the time in between the same weight with the same reps. Progressive overload, that's the key to all this. Constantly, progressively overloading. And that goes back to my point about scalability, 73% to 80. Progressively overload, we'll start at 73 and we'll add more reps, then more weight, then less time, then more reps, then more weight, then less time, then more reps, then more weight, then less time. And you keep getting better, which does what? It builds muscle tissue. Forces the body to adapt to this progressively increased demand where the body will begin to replicate, it must, new muscle tissue to deal with the demand that you keep placing upon it. Now, when you're training multi-joint compound movements, everything is growing, not just your bicep, squeezing, isolating, kind of palms down, just working the bicep. I get that, but you know, it should be, and I, the best way to train your biceps is the underhanded chin up, right? Because you're contracting at both, both tendons, both insertions, that's, that's important. You're using more, more muscles. Imagine the way that arm looks, your arm would look, when every muscle is working together at the same time. Right? So, to recap, this is how to gain muscle. That was the question. How to gain muscle. The best, best, best program to gain muscle is this. It is a full body, multi-joint, compound movement, approximately 80% of one rep max, for four sets or so of approximately six reps, and that's gonna change and fluctuate, which is where you need to keep journals. I got this dirty, nasty copy book sitting in my gym bag with a little pen, a couple pens thrown in there. It's all chalky and there's blood on it and coffee and whatever else. And I just chicken scratch the date, the workout, the reps and the weight. It looks like a doctor wrote it. It's a crazy pad. It's nothing super tight and efficient. And that's for some of you that works, but most people make it, well, I don't need my journal and I have to put it into my phone. I don't care about that. Write it down, get it thin so we can track. If you can measure it, you can improve it. We need that data. We are data, data hounds over here. I wanna know everything, 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 everything about all of our clients and all of our athletes. And the same thing with you guys. You should know everything so you can improve it. I've had days where I've gone on the gym, gone in the gym, felt like crap, but I had to hit a PR that day. I had to move forward. So what did I do? I did the same weight for the same reps with the same amount of time as last week, except I added a second set of collars. A second set of collars, which I don't know, maybe weighed four or six ounces each. Maybe I, I put half to a pound on the bar, but guess what? I did more than last time. 
progressive overload. And it doesn't have to be 10 and 20 pound jumps. It, needs, it has to be so small and so minute and so minuscule, that's fine, so granular. And that's the scalability, that's how you add muscle. Lasting, long lasting, functional, not going anywhere, look amazing when you take off your shirt. Muscle, can do anything muscle. Bring it everywhere you go, it's, it's never leaving you. That's how you do it. You don't do it by doing capable, isolation, bodybuilder curls. And I'm not bashing the bodybuilders, that's cool, that's fine. But that stuff doesn't work. It doesn't work for non-bodybuilders. It doesn't work really for non-assisted uh, trainees. Maybe in the novice beginner phase, just because everything's new, you're just learning to walk and train. Everything works again at that time. Typically, you're a little younger, right? In that 14 to early 20 range, hormones are typically bursting. You're on natural, <laughs> self-induced uh, um, uh, HRT because just everything's going and growing and you're getting hairs in places I didn't know. <laughs> Um, but that's this is the way so hopefully you guys find this helpful leave comments below ask any questions I answer every question within 24 hours of the video posting I can't go back you know three weeks later and say what did I post three weeks ago just so you guys understand within the first 24 hours I will answer every single question so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know when the videos come up so you can ask your questions this was a, a, a follower or you know viewer um, community this was a community members question I think that's the appropriate way um, so let me know, leave comments, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if it's helpful, but I wanna hear, and I'll talk about this more in the future, um, especially as you get going, ask questions in future videos, like Dolce, I'm following the, the full body program, but now what, I've been doing it for three, six, and here are my goals, here are my gains, now how do I get to the next level? Let me know when those questions start coming in, and I'll do an update video, because this is just the beginning. This is white belt stuff, guys. If you're not doing exactly this, you haven't been doing this for a long period of time, ooh, you got some gains. You got some gains, gains, gains to come. Um, if you guys wanted to, you're interested, you can go to the DolceDiet.com. We have an online diet and training program. A lot of this, our push-pull program is programmed very much like this. That's at the DolceDiet.com, so feel free to go there. Otherwise, keep checking back to the channel. I'm gonna keep putting great information for you guys. Boom.